I walk to some nice cemetery then around around the corner or you know over there and I did not want to go in there. I was uncomfortable. I was nervous. I was sitting there one point against a tree, just kicking my legs back. Very uncomfortable. I didn't know what that was. I just took it for fear. Um, and it took me to kind of build uh, a little bit of a network and to speak to other people who were a little more sensitive. Mind you, I thought a lot of that uh, psychic stuff was crap. Uh, in my young, uh, young days, trust me, I've been doing this a while, guys. We're good with the whole energy thing, all right? I, I, I bought it. I started as a skeptic. I didn't have any experience before I started. I was just terrified to death. So I just want to figure it out to see if I need to be skydiving a lot or <laughs> something else. Um, so, uh, good news, we're immortals. We will continue on. We'll tell out this vessel. Um, that's uh, over and over again. And of course, like, the abilities are absolutely a thing. Um, it was uh, interesting when, when I was explained that the energy that I was feeling was was kind of that, that, that spiritual energy. Um, and man, man, I was, uh, I was, I was at the point where it was getting super, super rough and I was kind of a cowboy renegade, I think 2004. Um, I've had some good experiences up that point. I've been actively going on some sites and I, I just went too close to the sun. I never was trained, never really, still was completely sold in the whole psychic thing. I mean, I knew that there was something to it, um, but it was a learning phase and I did, uh, hit a hit a fence and fell down in tears, bawling. Um, like five seconds of extreme fear, pushing my other uh, members that I had at this location, you know, in front of me, and scoop myself back on my butt again. Um, and it hit me for like five seconds, and I'm like, "What the hell was that?" Um, so I, I was embarrassed. <laughs> I, I checked myself and then I jumped the fence to confront, you know, what what just happened. And from that day on, I've never felt anything. I've passively put a protection barrier on me, and I'm okay with that for all you psychics going woo woo woo. It's okay. Um, I'm cool with that because I don't have really shady places, so I prefer to use the tools and, uh, and, and use the data there. But the nice thing is I've had that feeling. I know what it feels like. Um, so it was cool. Very cool to experience that. Um, and I have now, of course, Kelly, who's a part of the team, who, who takes all them sensitive feels for me, uh, which, is, which is awesome. And we use the tools side by side with her to validate even those experiences, which are pretty amazing. Uh, Nick and I, we've been together, we've been together for a while, 2009. Um, oh, ow! <laughs> we, we, uh, yeah, right? We split up for a little bit. Well, you said we've been together since 2009. I'm behind you whole night. <laughs> yeah, see? We're together. Uh, whoa! Um, so, wait, guys, it's not like that. <laughs> we just kiss. Um, <laughs> so, we start off as a nonprofit organization. You know, we wanted to, at the point, of going in, uh, there was a lot of options out there for people to get investigators to their home, which was perfectly fine, but unfortunately no one was really screening the options, and I was just getting a lot of newspaper articles run past me, putting not the most proud name on ghost hunters, paranormal investigators, tomatoes motto, in my opinion. Um, so I wanted to provide an alternate option that does a background check, that does kind of uh, put us all out there um, and, and allows the client to be comfortable with us. So we did residential, of course, never charge. We're a nonprofit at the point. Uh, the kicker was the field is not evolving. If you guys noticed, we're still doing, doing the same techniques. I think you know, 20 years ago, for the most part, we're just getting the instruments uh, more out there in the, in the eyes. Box. Except for tonight, we're going to try the most insane thing you've ever seen that nobody's ever done. It's going to be upside down. Stay tuned. <laughs> so we continue. Spoiler alert. Um, so we want to start progressing the field a little bit more. So we jumped back up about 2015. Uh, the band got back together. And we decided to uh, to go aggressively out of the public. And honestly, a lot of this uh, research and everything beforehand was behind the scenes. It was personal. It was for me, you know, for Nick, for clients, whatever, you know, kind of when we passed uh, a moment to investigate and learn ourselves. Um, but now the, uh, the game's kind of changed a little bit because there has been really no evolved process. Like Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison was a huge advocate of, of ghost hunting, of, of spiritual communication even. Um, and we'll get into that in a moment, which was super fascinating because 
he was told to actually speak with his loved ones, his past ones. Um, of course, you don't see that in the history books. You know what you do? What about Thomas Edison? Uh, you know, anyone, anyone here doesn't know who Thomas Edison is? A Edison, no, no. Light bulb goes off right now. You know, I had, uh, yeah. Actually, I asked the question. Dad jokes. <laughs> All day long. He's qualified now for that. For the moment, old guys, I'm good. I'm in. In my flat, I've been practicing for years. So, uh, the, yeah, I had actually a group that I asked him, um, who here, who here knows who uh, Thomas Alvin Edison is? And I tell you, it was a pretty large group. The room was almost packed. I don't know if they're being shy, but I think I got like two hands. And I'm like, really? I mean, the demographic um, was maybe slightly younger. But I'm pretty sure that's history, right? I don't know. Maybe they say don't live in the past. Maybe that's a thing. Um, so so the, the, the cool thing is ITC that was brought up, which is instrumental transcommunication. And that's really a lot of what investigators move forward. The Frank Box is a good example of that. EVP, uh, digital analog audio uh, recordings, electronic voice phenomenon. The plural of that is what? Electronic voice Phenomena. <laughs> Tell me where there's an S in there, by the way, guys. So when people say EVPs, <laughs> show me the S. And you can tell you were saying that. Ah, uh, so there you go. Yes. Oh, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so the communication aspect has not necessarily transformed, it's just been more aware out there. Uh, a lot of folks, and, and I think the TV shows have actually done wonders on keeping that awareness good because it has allowed a couple of, actually a, a, a plethora of really intelligent, uh, driven individuals to, to proceed with the field. And of course other people who are challenging alternate paths. Of course there's a whole Hell of a lot of, uh, you know, rip rap out there too. But at the end of the day, I'm not one to judge. I'm just doing my own thing on, on this and seeing if we can get some results. I feel through the communication that Nick, uh, Nick is a rock star at the, uh, the SB7, the spirit box um, that actually scans like a, like a broken radio. We don't really mess with the SB11. We've tried it before. We're, you know, we're more comfortable with the 7. Um, so it's, again, it's, it's preference at that point. It's knowing your tools, guys. Um, practice, like a lawyer does, like a doctor does. They keep repeating the same tactics and learning and, and evolving their own skill sets. It's very similar to what investigators, good investigators, want to uh, want to do. They want to learn. Um, and behaviors, I feel, are what you really have to look for when reviewing um, uh, the communication or when doing a live session with the uh, spirit box. Like the dips in the audio, we may, may have something, you know, we can go back and cross-reference. Um, you want to be assumptive, you want to be proactive when speaking. Don't ask, is there any spirits in here with us? Because if there's not, why would they answer? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. So, assume they're there. Say, hey, I know you're here. Tell us your name. Start that way. My name's Aaron, you know, what's, what's going on? So you get a lot better results that way. And we get a lot more I love yous than, than I hate yous. A lot more uh, hurry back. Um, yeah. Please stay forever. We got Don't leave. leave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One time I was uh, parked on a gravel road next to a cemetery that they exhumed all the people out of the cemetery in the 30s to give yeah. some yeah. of the guys work because of the depression. Yeah. So they exhumed everybody from the cemetery and moved them to two separate cemeteries. So we were out there. We made a video out there. You can watch it it's on YouTube. Everything happened. Shameless plug. But, uh, <laughs> I went back by myself and I was doing an SB7 session. I had the spirit box ported through the stereo in my truck so why not? I could turn the volume up. Yeah. yeah. It was nice and loud. So I was investigating from my truck the world's largest IT seat. They told us too loud, by the way. We didn't get a response saying your radio's broken. At the end of that video, I said, I'm going to leave now. Can you guys say goodbye? And I got a response that said, Goodbye, Nick. Don't get lost. <laughs> You're in the, I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so that was kind of cool to get home and hear that. I didn't hear it live, but I got home and it was like, Wow. Send it to him. And he, you know, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's the exact response. Actually. Oh my God. Did you see this? <laughs> we did it. 
Sit, we can quit. <laughs> and you know the funny thing is the energy is everywhere. It's unified. You know, once we tumble out of this vessel, whatever that process is beyond that, you know, that that's not really what we focus on. We focus on the poltergeist, the haunting, the ghost, spirit type uh, conversations and interactions. Um, but there's energy everywhere. As folks who are more in tune with, with that energy, their psychic ability, they feel it everywhere. Some more so, some in specific areas, um, like in paths, um, for going, you know, there's just different aspects of that. And it's funny because I did a spirit box session uh, one one uh, point, and before asking the questions as I did post review, they were answering the questions before I even got them out of my head. It gets you to think. It's like, wait a second, it's cool. Then I started thinking, did I talk about it before? And then, you know, of course, I'm, I'm second guessing everything and overthinking because that's what I do, <laughs> overthinker guys. Um, but let's, uh, you know, let's. Uh, can you grab me the uh, grab me the thingamabobber or something, guys?